Oh my God. Literally, I just got back a little while ago and I'm already making this video because I'm so excited to tell you guys what happened. It's just gonna be like a story time type video where I'm gonna tell you about how the weekend went, my encounters with some of the musicians, how some of the interviews went and everything else that I did basically. First of all, my birthday was on Thursday and I went to Epcot and drank around the world. Gonna be making a vlog about that. And stayed overnight in Orlando Thursday night and Friday morning, woke up, got ready, and left for Jacksonville to go to Welcome to Rockville for day one. This is the first year that it's been three days and I was very stoked about it. The lineup was incredible. Last year was my first time covering it as press and it basically changed my life. So I was really, really excited for this one, especially because now I am doing photography. So that made things a lot more different than it's been for me in the past. I've covered three other Danny Wimmer Presents festivals in the past year, but I never did photography. I just got this camera for Christmas and I wasn't really sure if I was gonna like it because I've always been a huge music fan, loved being in the crowds, so I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about being in the photo pit and then having to watch from the side afterwards, but honestly, it was a blast. I love it. So I'm really looking forward to continuing and progressing and getting better. I honestly think a lot of the pictures that I took came out pretty good for someone who was doing it for their first time. I'm not trying to become like a full-time photographer or anything, but it's definitely something that's really fun to do at these festivals because it's also harder to get interviews with the big names that Alternative Nation tends to focus on. So they either aren't doing them or they're only doing them with radio, whatever the case may be. So it's fun to have the photography side of things to do when I'm not going to be interviewing or doing any kind of video taking for anything or you know whatever so it just gives me something else to do and I'm really happy with how a lot of them turned out I had a lot of fun doing it so I'm definitely going to keep it up so we'll start with day one which was Friday by the time I got there and parked we had parked on the complete opposite side of the stadium from where I was supposed to be picking up my media bands so had to run completely around Everbank Stadium and it was the worst. It was a million degrees and I had an interview in like a half hour that I had to be there and set up for with a band called Them Evils. They opened for The Pretty Reckless on their tour. They've opened for Zack Sabbath. They opened for Alter Bridge and they just were on tour with Red Sun Rising. Now they're doing their own headlining tour and they're playing all of these festivals. So they're definitely really starting to pick up some traction. They're releasing another EP this Friday actually. So I'm really looking forward to where their career is going to take them because I saw them open for The Pretty Reckless in November of 2016 in Orlando. I liked their sound. It's a lot more kind of like 80s classic rock, like they have that like Motley Crue vibe to them and I got to interview the whole band, there's just only three of them which is awesome because they are an absolute powerhouse. The guys were really nice, they were really funny, they had great senses of humor, they kept cracking jokes throughout the interview. Definitely go check them out, their music is good, they're definitely carrying along that old classic rock vibe with them so they're one of the bands that are gonna be um, known from bringing that old sound back, if you know what I mean. After the Them Evils interview, I went and shot their set, and their set was really good. The crowd was really loving it. Then my friends and I headed over to the VIP section by the Metropolitan stage. We were drinking and eating there, and they have the screen set up next to the stage so that you can watch it without actually being in the crowd. But next up was Hailstorm. I actually found out that they were in the media area for a little while, and I happened to not be there, of course. I would have freaked out if I was even able to just meet Lizzie, so I'm very, very upset that I missed the opportunity, but I did get to shoot them, so that was really exciting because I really love Hailstorm. I actually posted them on Alternative Nation's Instagram, and Lizzie liked it and commented on it saying, thank you guys, so that was also really... <laughs> That was also really rewarding. See, I'm so excited still that my mind and thoughts and words are just not syncing properly right now. But after that, at the exact same stage, I got to shoot Godsmack. That was also really cool. They had some really cool pyrotechnics and lighting, and yeah, some of the shots came out really good, so make sure to stay tuned for those too. And last but not least, Friday night was Ozzy Osbourne's set. There was no photography allowed for his set at all. He put on a good show, I mean, you know, he can't really uh, move around too much on stage, but he, his voice is still pretty good for his age. So Saturday, we got to the field, and I really wanted to see Joyous Wolf set first. I saw them also at Louder Than Life, and I thought they were good then. Something was off about the sound that day, and their bass was exceptionally loud, but I did like their sound, so I was excited to see them again. And I'm actually going to be interviewing them in a few weeks at Rock on the Range, so um, I wanted to have something locked in for that, so I didn't choose to interview them this weekend. I'm waiting to do it then, 
but Joyous Wolf is also another really young band. They're probably around my age, and they're also playing that classic rock sound. They have a song out now, it's their single called Mountain Man. Singer Nick Reese, he's an absolute maniac. He does all these acrobatic flips and splits and everything else on stage, and it's he's a pretty good entertainer. He likes to hype up the crowd. He jumped off the stage and was running up and down the aisle between the two crowds after Joyous Wolf, Red Sun Rising went on, and I was actually interviewing Red Sun Rising that day as well. So I caught their set, I got some pretty good shots of them, um, but I was running back and forth because I ne needed to go set up for the interview, so I went over to the media before Red Sun Rising set ended, but I will get to see it again at Rock in the Range as well. They interviewed Ryan from Red Sun Rising, and he had some really good answers for the questions that I had. I'm very pleased with how the interview came out, and you know, we talked about Chris Cornell a little bit at the end. I, I showed him my I Am The Highway tattoo, and he was like, wow, you are a fan of him. We just kind of sat there for a while and hung around and waited until it was time to go to Stone Temple Pilots, actually. While I was in the media area, they walked past me, and I think Robert thought that I was going to be interviewing him because he came up to me and he was like, hello, and I was like, hello, Stone Temple Pilots, and yeah, so they happened to walk by. Obviously, I wasn't interviewing them, but um, I was a little bit starstruck when I saw them because I've been a fan of Stone Temple Pilots for a while. So I kind of turned around and I wanted to get a picture with them, but so many other people were just like lining up to take pictures of them. I didn't want to seem like a fangirl, even though I kind of am. So I just let it slide. And I was like, you know what? There will be next time because they're also going to rock on the range too. So all these things I'm pushing off. And you know what? I did that with Soundgarden last year and then Soundgarden dismantled the day before rock on the range. So I don't know. Stone Temple Pilots set was awesome. Um, I was actually photographing them. Can't post anything until I get approval from their publicist, and I don't know how likely that is because um, she's not really a fan of Alternative Nation. But I took the photos anyway, and I went through hell and back to get them. So I really hope she lets me because I was in the pit and I completely forgot about the band I was supposed to get that was specifically for taking pictures of them. I had to sprint in the heat all the way with my camera because my friends had my bag to the media area for them to tell me that someone went to the pit with the bands. So then I had to run all the way back. <laughs> Shit luck chefs. I made it just in time. But they came out and they did all old STP songs except for Meadow. They played Meadow, obviously. Um, I thought their performance was fantastic. That's the second time I've seen Stone Temple Pilots. Both times were not with Scott Weiland. The first time was with Chester Bennington, so. I don't know, please, Jeff, please, just don't leave. He also climbed off the stage and ran up the aisle a little bit and then came back and he looked right at me and I got a shot of his face and it's very, very blurry, but I just wanted to keep it because he's literally looking directly at me while he's in the um, pit. And then he climbed behind up on the fence and was like, you know, high-fiving fans and everything. And then he got back up on stage and they performed a really good set. So I was really stoked. Even if I never get to post them anywhere, I can hang them in my room, so that's always nice. I actually ran directly from Stone Temple Pilots set across the street to the Monster Energy stage and shot Breaking Benjamin. I really wasn't planning on doing that, but um, I do like a couple of their songs. A lot of people like them, they have a really big fan base. I got some crazy videos of the crowd before they came on, and I was one of the first ones in the pit, so I was just walking back and forth, and people were waving to my phone and everything. I got some good shots of Benjamin singing, screaming, and you can see like the veins like protruding in his neck. I went back across the street to where Stone Temple Pilots had been playing and shot Stone Sour. That was pretty cool. I didn't really get the best ones of Corey because he moves around a lot and is really fast and like I said, this is my first time doing it. I'm a rookie, so it was kind of difficult for me because if he's not moving around really fast, he's making a lot of facial expressions, so a lot of them just weren't coming out as focused as I would have liked, but I got some really good ones of the other band members. Yeah, some girl climbed up a tree to watch them Someone helped, like she was like hanging from it and then someone like helped push her up. So we thought she was just gonna stay on this limb and watch it. She climbed almost all the way up this fucking tree. And we were just watching her like, this girl's gonna drop dead like right in front of us and it's not gonna be pretty. And finally, day three, always the most depressing day because you know it's about to come to an end. We went a little bit later, watched Red Fang set. Not really something I would listen to on my own, but I didn't dislike it, so yeah. It was interesting, to say the least. There was a lot of mosh pits. Our friends actually went into the mosh pits and I didn't think I'd ever see them again. And then Greta Van Fleet was playing at the same stage after, so I shot them. Lauren really wanted to see Greta Van Fleet in the media area. So after Greta Van Fleet set, 
we went into the media area and waited around for a while and eventually we saw them and they were doing a couple interviews. I didn't see Josh at all. I did see Jake and I went up to him and I introduced myself and I said, hi, I'm Lauren. I interviewed your brother a few months ago and his response was, yeah, you look familiar. It was Josh, right? Yeah, I saw the video and I was like, oh God, I hope you didn't see all the comments on it too. Thanks guys. We were talking to him a little bit. He met Robbie Krieger on Friday, so he was telling me about that. He's actually on the latest cover of Guitar Player Magazine, so that was really cool. And they're really, really, really picking up now. Like, the crowd for them was big. And at Louder Than Life, it wasn't as big. It wasn't even half as big as it was um, yeah, yesterday. They're going on tour with Dorothy, which is also really exciting for me because I've done some stuff for them as well. After we met Jake in the media area, I actually went and shot Billy Idol. Something I don't think I'm ever going to throw out because my like inner elementary school self that used to listen to like 80s rock was flipping out. And there was a couple times where I was on the side where none of the other photographers were and the guitar players were posing for me. Foo Fighters were amazing. They had a two hour set, which was the longest of the weekend. John Travolta came out on stage. Billy Idol came out and sang with them for a little bit. Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins actually switched and Taylor sang under pressure while Dave Grohl drummed. So that was really cool getting to see it switch off a little bit like that. I've never seen them before, but I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. We were laughing the whole time. Dave has a really funny sense of humor. There was a lot of crowd surfing. Both my friends crowd surfed and I held their stuff because I've crowd surfed before and it was fun but a little traumatic so I didn't know if I was really feeling it, you know? Ultimately, I had a fantastic weekend. I'm looking forward to Rock on the Range. So if you're at Rock on the Range, definitely say hi. A couple people did tell me that they saw me. Um, one of my Twitter followers actually who I know from a Pretty Reckless concert said that she saw me on the screen shooting Stone Temple Pilots and I was like, why was I on the screen? I, I don't know. Follow me on social media so that you can see when the interviews are going to be up on Alternative Nation. But thanks for listening to my story if you got up to this part and for following along as usual. The next couple weeks are going to be kind of crazy with moving out and everything and then rock on the range. But I'm going to try to make updates as I can. So thanks guys. See you soon.